yogis, it's Bri here, and we are here in beautiful Squaw Valley at the Wonderlust. And I'm here to talk about five poses that if we're new to yoga, or even if we've been doing yoga for quite some time, we're kind of perplexed with how to get into them. When we go to yoga classes, typically we're learning the poses by sight. So we're looking around and we're like, oh, does this work? No, no. And I'm right there with you. I learned yoga by sight. It's when I started to really want to deepen my practice that I learned yoga from the inside out. The first pose we're going to focus on is Chaturanga. I'm going to show you with Kevin. He's going to do the modifications. And then Ali's going to do the Chaturanga in its fullest expression. In order to get into Chaturanga, you have to transition to the very tips of your toes, right to the cliffs, so that the shoulders come past the wrists. Put your knees down. Keep the ribs and navel in, then keep the shoulder tips lifted as you bend the elbows halfway, pause, squeeze the elbows in, good, look forward, that's it, lean forward a little bit more, pull the knit, ribs, navel in, that's it, good job, now upward facing dog. So notice how we wanted to go straight to upward facing dog from Chaturanga. In our mind, our mind always takes a path of least resistance. But the only way to really build the strength and the mind-body connection is to hold it and get past that point of feeling like it's hard. Knees down is a wonderful modification so you can really learn the elbows over the wrists, the shoulders in line with the elbows. Now Ali's going to show us the fullest expression of the pose. She comes into plank pose from her downward facing dog, shifts all the way forward to the tips the toes, then bend the elbows halfway, lift the shoulder tips up, squeeze in, pull this in, squeeze your butt, beautiful straight line, then she comes into upward facing dog, and goes back into downward facing dog, boom, Chaturanga Dandasana. Another pose that tends to be quite challenging is your Garudasana or eagle wrap. We're always so focused on this action that we forget that our foundation is the most important. A great modification for those of you who are learning it is to back away from the pose. So first, take a deep breath, relax the shoulders. We're going to start with the left foot as the first foot we balance on. You're going to draw your right knee into your chest. Now, can you keep the right leg lifted as you bring your hands to your heart? Put a little bend in the left knee. Cross the right knee over the left knee. Good, now squeeze the thighs together. Squeeze your butt at the same time. That's the seal of the wrap. Kevin is going to bring his toes of his right foot all the way down to the ground and that'll be what helps him stay up. Allie is gonna wrap the foot all the way around and squeeze both the thighs and the calves together, then squeeze the butt. Now you're gonna take your right arm underneath your left. Kevin is just gonna stay here, maybe grabbing a hold of the base of the thumb of the left hand with the right fingertips. Allie can actually hook the fingers maybe. Pull down, sit a little bit lower, lift the elbows up, and maybe for the fullest expression of the pose, fold down, elbow over knee. Beautiful job, inhale, rise up, Unwrap like you're a flapping eagle through the air and bring your right foot down. Great job, maybe you can try it on that left side. We're standing here laughing because we're about to do everyone's favorite pose, revolved or twisted triangle or parvita trikonasana. When we twist, we wanna keep the pelvis neutral and try to revolve from the waist, right? So twisted triangle really, really challenges you to keep that. Shall we try it? Okay, and I'll show you some modifications. So we're gonna fold down. Step your left foot back. Spin the left heel down. Okay. Line it up heel to arch. The more cross your legs are, the easier this is. Okay, now Kevin's taking the modification. He's going to take his left hand onto the right ankle or up higher onto the shin. From here, he's gonna take his right thumb into the right hip crease and push it back. That action of pushing back will square the pelvis and squeeze the thighs together. He can, he's gonna take his hand, right hand to his heart, and just begin to open the shoulder. This is a really nice modification for this. You feel how open the shoulder. Allie's gonna take her left fingertips underneath the left shoulder. Then she's gonna take the thumb as well into the right hip crease, push it back, firm the thighs together. Now she's gonna open the right arm. In this fullest expression of the pose, most of us just open from the fingertips. Notice how her shoulder's really cramped. I'm going to encourage her to open from the collarbone opening. Her shoulders are a little bit tight. She's gonna push the palm forward and continue to revolve open from the ribs. Beautiful, look at that. 
palm forward, revolve open from the ribs. Yes. Now squeeze your thighs together, hold the pose. Good, for the fullest, fullest expression, she would come down onto that left palm. We love this pose. Wow. We love this pose. Wow. Open up a little bit more. You love this pose. I do too. <laughs> Revolve triangle. This next one is my favorite. It's the handstand. Is it your favorite too? Uh, getting there. Yes. So we go from our least favorite to our most favorite. You know, I really love handstand because it's taught me how to fail, how to rise back up, how to learn from my fails, and then how to build confidence and strength from the inside out. But that's because I had really great teachers teaching me from the ground up. Uh, we deal with a lot of fear when it comes to inversion, so we really, really need to gather the tools that'll help us deal with that fear. So if you're starting out, you'll need a partner for this one. I love working in partners with um, inversions because it helps us, you know, send each other some energy and give each other some support. If you're starting out, this is what it looks like. Kevin's gonna take hands down, one leg up. So you wanna make sure that you understand first, wrists underneath the shoulders. He squeezes his forearms in, ribs and navel in, gaze between the wrists. He's going to push down and through my hand. He's gonna lift this thigh bone up until the pelvis comes over the shoulders. There you go. Now he's gonna find his engagement in his core by bending this knee and pulling the knee into the chest. Squeeze the elbows in. Good, and then come on down. Beautiful job. That's a really great way to just feel out what it feels like to get the hips over the shoulders without committing to the entire body being upright. Awesome job. Notice she's in this box shape. She's gonna draw her ribs in and gaze down between the wrists so that there's not too much of a back bend coming from the neck. Pushes down and into my hand. As she brings the pelvis over, the leg goes up and then both legs come together. Notice how I move to the side. Good, once she feels like she squeezes her thighs, she squeezes her butt, I make sure that the hand in the back side of her is always there just in case she decides to flop over. Right there, use your fingertips. Fight for it, that's it. Right in between there. Yes, good, and then hands to hips. She lowers down, go. And that's your hands here. Great job. Tall, small, everyone can do it. Enjoy. Helping yogis really connect with their bodies to the yoga practice is one of my passions. So thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see you at one of the Wonderlust events live in person where I like to do this in every single class I teach. Thanks again.